Good morning. Grace and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this Labor Day weekend, and we uh, welcome you uh, on this day of worshiping, whether you are here in person or if you are uh, worshiping with us online, and if you are uh, traveling this weekend and are worshiping from wherever you are, we uh, pray that you are travel safely uh, to where you are going and where you come back, uh, but are glad that you are uh, with us today as we gather for this time of worship. If you are worshiping with us online, uh, just a couple of things. that If, if you've never worshipped with us on Facebook Live, uh, opportunity and the comment section allows you to stay connected. Uh, you can write in and we can uh, see, uh, some of us can see them here in the service, uh, especially important later when we lift up our prayer concerns, our joys. Uh, we'll be able to share those with those who are worshiping with us uh, here in person and, and continue to be the body of Christ, even though we may be in many different places. And so welcome again to you uh, worshiping online and, of course, to all of you worshiping with us here in person. As I mentioned last week, uh, we're beginning a, a four-week uh, sermon series uh, that I don't have a fancy name for or anything like that, but it, it's a, a sermon series looking at books of the Bible that maybe we haven't often studied because, honestly, they're really short. And because they're so short, sometimes we overlook them. And so uh, each week we're going to look at a different book of the Bible. So it's kind of uh, cool that we're going to get to go through four different books of the Bible in four weeks. And today we begin with the book called Philemon. And so we'll study what this book has to teach us today. And uh, it'll be an exciting new chapter, maybe learning something that you haven't uh, experienced that maybe is not as familiar to you, and so I, I hope that uh, the the spirit stirs within you today. But as we prepare for this time of worship, I invite us to go to the Lord in a moment of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for uh, this holiday weekend in which we uh, are able to to celebrate uh, the many contributions of all those around our our community, and are reminded of how. Each and every one of us are important to, to building up that community. Help us to, to be gathered wherever we are uh, and to be able to lift our hearts up to you, giving thanks and praise, or to, to pour out our, our hurts, our pains to you, to leave them at your altar, knowing that you are our God. However, we come to your worship today. We come expecting great things from you. Not because of anything that this church or I, the pastor, or anybody else does, but simply because of who you are, God. And so stir within us that love, that truth, that good news that we may go into the world and share with others. And this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, as we continue to prepare our hearts for praise, I invite you to stand as you are able and sing our first uh, praise song. If you're online, you can see the, the words on the screen, and they'll be on the screen for us here as well. Let us sing, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and we know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and we know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news we got us in the land, and they know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and they know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and they know we are Christians by our love. All 
praise to the Father from all things, all things come. All praise to Jesus, His only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And they know we are Christians by our love. Amen. You may be seated. As I mentioned earlier, today we're looking at the book of Philemon. And so we're going to start with verse 1 and chapter 1. And it says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and to Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of your saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I'm appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confidence of your obedience, I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. And it goes on to 22. One thing more, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping through your prayers to be restored to you. The word of our Lord for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you have ever heard of the, the app Goodreads? It's a, yeah, I see some know. It, it's an app where you can kind of set a challenge for yourself on how many books you're going to read, and then you can kind of go through and say, I've read this many, and you can see your friends and what they're reading at the same time. It's a, it's a pretty fun app to, to be able to do. And there's nothing like being able to, to get through a book and then to say, I'm, I'm finished. It's kind of this nice feeling of a, accomplishment. A, and this feeling of accomplishment, you know, it, it's similar not even just for the, the fun literary books that we read, but even for books of the Bible. I mean, sometimes I know we can get kind of slogged down through some of the books. You know, I, I know as we get to like Leviticus and Numbers, they can be something that are just draining for us as we begin to read them. Or it can be hard when we're in Genesis or Job that are, are huge books, and we feel accomplished when we we finish reading one of these books of the Bible. Not that we should feel prideful for it, but it, it feels good. We can look back on it and say, hey, I finished this book. I, c I can see what this is all about. 
If you're one of these people that likes to feel the sense of accomplishment for, for finishing reading a book, then congratulations because you have just finished reading a book this morning. So uh, you, you have can check one off of your list. And technically there's two more verses, so if you really want to be technical, you can go read those two extra verses. But you've pretty much read the book of Philemon this morning. And though it's a, a short book, it packs quite a punch. And so it's worth studying for us, even though sometimes we avoid it just because it's so short. We overlook it. And yet it's part of our Holy Scripture. So why not study it? Philemon is a, an interesting book. I, it's a letter from Paul, like many of the books in the New Testament that we have. Except for it's not like many of the letters that he writes to the churches telling them how to do things, what's the best way to run the church that he's established. This is a letter to a person, a man named, well, Philemon. Sometimes people might call it Philemon, but Philemon is is one of the ways that it's pronounced. So this is a a letter that he writes to this person who is in uh, Colossae, uh, the Colossians church. And he's writing to this man who is wealthy, this man who has land, this man who is prominent in this church, who probably is hosting most of these church events because in the early church you didn't go to the temple, you didn't have a a sanctuary like this to to worship in, you worshiped in homes. And so this this man Philemon was, was hosting many of these events in the Colossians church. And so he writes to Philemon, Paul does, with a strange request. He writes asking for him to take back a former slave named Onesimus. He says, Onesimus I've met while I've been in jail, and he has become like a son to me. He's become family to me. I love this guy, and I love him so much that I want to keep him, but I am sending him back to you. Please take him back. Now on the surface as we read this, this can be a troubling text. It can seem egregious that somebody would send their slave back to a former master. In fact, this is a text that here in America was was used often to not only justify slavery, but to justify the practice and the, the, the laws that would say you would have to send a slave back to their masters. However, if we are actually reading the text and what Paul is saying, this is not something that he is condoning. It is quite the opposite. Paul here is telling the the people, telling Philemon that this practice, it, it goes against our Christian beliefs. It goes against everything that we stand for. And so he shares this idea in a really tactful way. Maybe not so tactful, but in in a really interesting way in this letter to Philemon. He starts off, again, kind of praising them the same way he does almost in all of his letters, saying, I love you. You've done a great job. You and your family and your church, you've been wonderful in the midst of persecution. You are amazing. That's kind of how he starts off most of his letters. And then he says, and I have this request of you. I want you to take back Onesimus. I've met him while I've been in jail, and he's awesome. I mean, this guy is great. You should see the way that we've been studying together the scriptures and how much he has grown in his faith. This kid is like a a son to me. I love him, but I know I have to return him back to you. Now, if you can't tell, this is kind of the New Revised Daniel version of the the Bible, but it's essentially what Paul is, is saying here. And so he he says, I'm sending him back to you. But as I send him back to you, don't don't welcome him as a slave. Welcome him as you would welcome me. Treat him as you would welcome the very person who brought you to Jesus Christ. Don't treat him as a slave. Treat him as your brother, for that is what he is. This is where he starts to to get that kind of tactfulness. He says, you know, I could force you to do this. After all, I am Paul. 
I am the leader of this church. I have established this church. I'm the one who sits on the Jerusalem council and who has made it even possible for Gentiles like you to have a voice. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to exert my power to force you to do this. Instead, I want you to do it on the basis of love. On the basis of love. And if he has done anything wrong against you, if there's any debt that he has, you count that against me. Because after all, you owe me a little bit as well. So you know, that little tactful thing that he's kind of sliding in there. He's like, but I'm not going to hold that power against you. I want you to do it on the basis of love. Now, if we know anything about Paul, this is not really all that surprising. Love is a very important thing for Paul. I mean, we, we know from one of his other letters, the, the letter to 1 Corinthians, maybe one of his most famous chapters, chapter 13, that we, we often hear at weddings. He, he lifts up three great Christian virtues. Faith, anybody want to continue? Faith, hope, and then love. And the greatest of these is love. So these three Christian virtues, and the greatest of them is love. And love is extremely important to Paul. In fact, as he builds up to chapter 13, he, he says that love is the more excellent way. And so this is the, the basis that he's making his plea, his argument for, the basis of love. But is love really the most excellent way? I mean, let, let's kind of like step out of kind of the biblical world right now and kind of just, let's be real. Like, doesn't just offering up love as the answer sometimes feel like a cop-out? Uh, like, sometimes, doesn't it seem like, oh, love is the answer it is overlooking so many of the real challenges that are happening in the world? The, the hurts and the pains? I mean, it can seem like this, Pollyanna response to uh, a really tough world that we live in. It's almost like the, the Disney complex where you're watching the, a plot unfold and then you know at the end somehow it's all going to get better because love is going to somehow magically save somebody. I mean, you can look at Snow White, you can look at Sleeping Beauty, you can look at Tangled or Frozen or Beauty and the Beast. All of them have this like moment where, where love magically saves somebody, right? A and so we think about that. And is that really how the world works? I mean, does the world really work with love magically saving us? I mean, we, we, we really look and we see love working off of power, people exerting power. People exerting greed, who has money, who, who doesn't. Reciprocity, the idea of, you know, I'll help you if you can help me back. Th this is how the world works. The basis of love doesn't seem to be the, the way the world works. And that's exactly what Paul is arguing. We don't work as the world works as Christians. We work differently. We live to a higher standard. We live to a more excellent way. When we live by love, we're not living simply to, to be nice to one another. We are living into a world in which Christ died to the world and rose again conquering it. We live in a more excellent way that is challenging to us. To, to live in a basis of love is to reject the parts of the world that don't live in accordance to Christ's love. It's like how Philemon is called by Paul to reject the, the normal societal understanding and expectations of this slavery and to see his own slave who ran away, who he rightfully has the, the property to, and to see him now not as his slave, but as his own brother, as an equal. To see him the same way as Paul was, a person who himself was actually greater than Philemon, to see them all as equals. This is the basis of love. It's not simply, uh, let's all get along and be nice. It is, let's find a way to see each other 
to work in towards a more excellent way, the way that Christ has established on this earth. To live into the virtues of faith, of hope, and the greatest of these, of love. It is a challenge to us. It's a challenge that we have seen in this short but powerful letter to Philemon. And so we ask ourselves today, what, what ways are we being challenged in the basis of love? What ways are we being challenged the same way that Philemon was to, to reconsider all the, the things that have been normal to us and instead to recognize things in a new light, in a, in a new basis, a basis of love? Now, I can't answer that for you. It's a personal question for each one of you. But I invite you today to consider that. Where are you being challenged as Philemon was? To respond in the world, not as the world responds, but to respond on the basis of love, the greatest virtue that Christ has taught us. Amen. And now as we respond to this gift of love, I invite us to sing our next hymn, which is in our hymnal. Uh, it is on page 408. It is called The Gift of Love. Uh, it'll be on our screen as well and on the screen for those who are worshiping at home. And so I invite us to stand as we can uh, and those who are in person and let us sing together The Gift of Love. Oh, I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love. My words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Oh, I may speak seated. At this time, we go to the Lord in a, a moment of prayer, lifting up our joys and our concerns. And so uh, I'll ask that those who are worshiping with us online, you can go ahead in the comment section and uh, begin to type out and send in your joys and your concerns. But we will begin uh, with those who are here in person, uh, that if you have any joys or concerns that you'd like to share, uh, you may do so at this time. Personal ownership that maybe you really. 
thank you for sharing that glory sighting with us. Any other prayers? Pray for Nana. That's right. My uh, stepmom, who is continuing to uh, recover from a stroke and a fall, and uh, we continue to pray for her. Prayer for George's niece who also had a fall and is still in the hospital. Someone is turning 10 today. Well, happy birthday. Double digits. <laughs> happy birthday. Members of our military. Any others? If not, are there any online that we'd like to lift up? Yes, uh, we have several. Glenda Pearsall asks for continued prayers for recovery for Ruth McDonald and Sydney Murray from their recent surgeries. Jen Malfair prays for the outpouring of love shown by the community to the Bain Hoover families after the loss of their daughter. The high schools in our community have embraced each other and the family during this time of terrible pain. Also prayers for Kim Poland and her recovery from recent procedures. And Jennifer Malfair asks for prayers for my mom and Jerry as they travel to Yellowstone this week. Praise for Keaton and the role he's taken on in our church. And Jennifer Heffron asks for praises, or says praises, that she is able to spend time with her family this weekend in Rhode Island. Wonderful. That's great. With all these uh, joys, do we have another? prayers in advance for Lucy's upcoming surgery. Thank you. With all these joys and concerns that we have lifted up, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity that we have come to study your word, to grow in our faith, and to grow in love. And as we do, we come together with one another, sharing our hurts and sharing our joys, and we celebrate birthdays. Uh, and the, the celebration that uh, they are and the, the good news of, of life uh, that you have given us and that we continue to get to celebrate and be part of with others. We give you thanks for uh, the beginning of school uh, and even as uh, we gather with family and friends this weekend for uh, Labor Day, we lift up... Uh, family and friends who are hurting, especially uh, the Woodgrove uh, community, uh, the loss of uh, Colette. We pray for their family uh, and in uh, that whole, uh, all the friends and, and just that whole community. We pray for those who continue to battle with COVID-19, for those who are uh, hurting uh, from recent surgeries and are, are continuing to, to battle with uh, that uh, recovery process. Uh, we pray for those who have upcoming surgeries and that you may quell any anxiety or fears that they may have. And Lord, we pray for our community, for Round Hill, for Loudoun County, for our commonwealth and our country. We pray for those who have been affected by uh, economic disasters, by natural disasters. We pray for those who have lost lives from the hands of man-made disasters. And we include that prayer for our neighbors around the world, for those in Russia and Ukraine and those continuing to, to deal with the, the horrible war in that area. 
And also we pray for Pakistan and the, the horrible flooding that has devastated so much of that country. So many lives and villages that have been destroyed. Lord, we lift up our hearts and our prayers, but also know that in lifting up our prayers, we are called to action and to serve, and we give you thanks that you call us through the church to be able to serve through so many ways, through our gifts, through our, our works in the food pantry and so many other avenues. And so, Lord, continue to help us to hear the call of the needy as we respond. And this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, as we gather around the table, we do so in uh, a celebration of God's grace for us, that love that we have talked about earlier. And so I invite you to hear that invitation and then to pray with me our prayer of confession. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now, as people who have been forgiven and experienced that love from Christ, I invite you to offer that love and forgiveness to one another as we pass the peace. If you're online, you can do so through the comment section with words like, Peace of Christ be with you. And so let us pass the peace to one another. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. I invite the ushers to come forward as we give of our tithe and of our offering.
Almighty God, we give you thanks for these gifts. We give you thanks for the love that you continue to pour out upon us. And we ask that you take these gifts and use them, that this love may be shown to not only this congregation, but our community, our, our world around us. Use us as your hands and feet to be a sign of your love to the world. And this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And when Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is poured out for you. The table of our Lord is prepared. This is not my table. It's not Round Hill UMC's table. It is the Lord's table. And so all are invited to come and to receive this wonderful holy meal of our Lord's uh, supper. 
Uh, we'll be doing this in a means that's called intinction. All that simply means is I'll hand you a piece of bread and you can take it and dip it into the chalice. We also have gluten-free option here, uh, and that'll be in the center if you need it. Uh, and also we still have some uh, prepackaged elements if that is something that makes you feel more comfortable. There's both gluten-free and uh, the uh, gluten elements over there as well. With that being said, I invite my uh, assistant uh, to come forward at this time. We'll begin with this side here. I invite that they come forward. They can wrap around. Then we'll go to the uh, middle. They'll come and wrap around. And then this side over here can start by wrapping around in the back and coming forward. I invite you to come and uh, receive the bread of life. The body of Christ. For you. Mighty God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself up for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. As we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a couple announcements before our benediction. Uh, the first is just a reminder of Sunday school that is uh, going to be uh, happening each week, uh, but also uh, it's at 9 a.m. There's an adult Sunday school class that's going uh, through the books of the Bible. And that is down here in the fellowship hall. And then upstairs, there's a children's class that's going to be looking at uh, what's in the Bible with Buck Denver. And so uh, all are invited to, to attend the, these classes. Uh, and lots of fun uh, to continue to study uh, the, the Bible before, and, uh, uh, before worship and uh, learn a little more uh, about uh, the wonderful things that it has to say. Also, on September 17th, we have been invited to uh, join and participate in a 
uh, out of darkness walk, a uh, suicide prevention awareness walk that is uh, going to be at Ida Lee. We've been invited to walk with other United Methodist churches in that uh, uh, participation. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, come talk to me and I can uh, help us register as part of that team. And then finally, our picnic uh, that got rescheduled is uh, rescheduled for October 2nd. That's going to be uh, over at Franklin Park at 3.30. Uh, and then it's going to be rain or shine, so it'll be here if it's raining. Um, but uh, we are uh, looking forward to that wonderful uh, time together. Any other uh, announcements we'd like to lift up? Uh, church Council, two, uh, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock via Zoom. Um, I wanted to announce that I over abridged my uh, stump today, uh, glory sighting, when I stated at the end that God gives you tools um, and I mean, the courage. You have to have the courage to use them, and it gives you many tools. And if the early tools don't work and the heavy tools Thank you for sharing. Any other announcements that we have this morning? If not, then I invite you to go into the world living not on the basis of power or greed or of lust or reciprocity, but on the basis of love, basis of the greatest of the Christian virtues, something that calls us to live in this world as Christ lived into this world, that Christ died in this world and rose and conquered for us, to go and live on the basis of love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.